Uh, because of the ongoing pandemic, Sussex County Board of County Commissioner meetings will be conducted remotely via Zoom. The public may participate online or by telephone. For the meeting agenda, visit the Sussex County website at www.sussex.nj.us and click Commissioners under Events. To participate in the meeting, click Online Info. Via phone, dial 1646-558-8656. Put in meeting ID 526-121-1125 and the passcode 07860, which are posted in the online info. There also is the Zoom link to click. This is Sussex County, New Jersey, Special County Commissioner's Budget Workshop meeting, March 11th, 2021. It is now 6.02 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask Susie to please call the roll. Okay, Commissioner Carney. Here. Director Fantasia. Here. Commissioner Fasano. Here. Commissioner Patillo. Here. Commissioner Yardley. Here. Okay, I'll ask you to please join me in a moment of silence and a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United of States, States of America, America, America and to the republic for which it stands, which it stands for one, which nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Justice for all. Number four is the public statement. <clears throat> Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3D of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail, such notice being submitted on March 3rd, 2021, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, Newton, New Jersey, to the following. New Jersey Herald, New Jersey Sunday Herald, Star Ledger, WSUS Radio and WNNJ Radio, and is also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for Public Announcements and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. Okay, number five, I need an approval of the agenda. May I have a motion, please? I make the motion. So moved. I'll second okay. her. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, I'm sorry, first, any discussion? Aye. Uh, aye. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Pass. Uh, number six, executive session. There is none. Number seven, proclamations, certificates, and presentations. There are none. Uh, number eight, public hearings. There are none. Number nine, public session from the floor. This public session comments are limited to three minutes or less. I must only address issues regarding agenda items. Callers wanting to make a comment are to first state their name and municipality. The clerk will create a roster and call each in the order received. May I please have a motion to open the meeting to the public? I'll make the motion. And a second. I'll second. I'll second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the meeting is open to the public. Does anyone wish to speak? Seeing no one come forward, I'll make a motion to close the meeting to the public. Uh, can I have that motion, please? Make the motion. And a second. All second. second. Wait, was that um, Anthony? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting is now closed to the public. Okay, uh, number 10, freeholders comments. Um, we, I don't know if any freeholders do have comments this evening before the presentation, but uh, I will go to each freeholder. I'm not freeholder, actually, we are now commissioners, go figure. This is a carryover okay, from last year, so <laughs> not that. Okay, so we're going to commissioner comments. Uh, we're going to start uh, with Commissioner Carney. 
I have none, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Commissioner Patillo. I don't have anything right now either. Thank you. Commissioner Yardley? No, nothing. Thank you. Deputy Director Fasano? No comments for now, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you. And I have no comments. I'll save my comments till uh, after the presentation. So next we have uh, the approval number 11 of the consent agenda. There is none. Number 12, approval of minutes, none. 13, appointments and or resignations, none. 14, resolutions, none. 15, awards of contract change order orders and bid, none. Number 16, financial, our 2021 budget review. And at this point, I will turn it over to the team and I will first uh, defer to Greg who can certainly um, take the order of presenters for us. Thank you very much, Director. It's a pleasure to uh, be before the board this evening and uh, being able to present the proposed 2021 county budget. Uh, as you all are certainly aware, this is the culmination of about eight months worth of work and would like to recognize all those uh, that were involved uh, with the presentation, uh, with, with the preparation of the budget and this evening's presentation. Uh, at this time, what I'd like to do is I would like to introduce uh, Ray and Raymond Serenelli, who will give an overview of what the county's financial position is, ha had been closing out the year and uh, where things stand now at, at the beginning of 2021. Uh, once they conclude their presentation, uh, I will pick up and uh, walk the board and the public through uh, the highlights of the 2021 uh, proposed budget. And then uh, when I get to a, a point which will conclude with our capital improvement program, uh, I will turn it over to our chief financial officer, Elka Yetter, uh, who will share uh, some information uh, relative to some of the uh, final pieces of the budget and uh, what the board will be asked to consider. And then we will uh, open it up for any questions that the uh, commissioners have. So uh, without uh, any further ado, uh, I would uh, ask uh, Ray Serenelli to, uh, to start. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, I know tonight is really focused on 2021 and the 2021 budget. Um, but just wanted to give you a look back at how 2020 closed out so you can know where you've been and make uh, better decisions uh, moving forward. So a few weeks ago, your CFO completed and uh, we have reviewed the AFS for 2020 and very happy to report that, uh, you know, you maintained your financial stability in a very difficult year. Um, that's really indicated by the fund balance. So your fund balance at the beginning of the year was 16,860, and you ended the year at 16,916. So a gain of about 56,000, um, which is, I think, pretty tremendous in a year with uh, a shutdown, a pandemic, so many unprecedented things happen. To be able to maintain your financial stability um, is a great thing. And that's really attributed to the good planning that's been done over the years, specifically when, when it comes to the budget, you know, last year's budget, like, like most of your budgets or all of your budgets over, over the last 10 or 15 years, really stayed to the middle of the line where you're not putting overburden on your revenues and you're prepared in your expenditures for uh, certain uh, adverse conditions. And when things don't happen badly, you know, you maintain that financial stability, you improve that financial stability. Uh, but when things do go sideways, like they did last year, you're able to uh, see through those tough times and maintain your financial stability. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's great that you're still in a, a positive position through the pandemic. Um, in fact, uh, we had a meeting with the rating agency back in January and they did uh, affirm your AA plus rating with a stable outlook. But they also, uh, one of their 
uh, indicators is a budgetary performance and that upgraded from adequate to strong. So I think to see an upgrade in an indicator um, by an external source like a rating agency through a pandemic uh, year is great to see. It proves that not only are you managing things responsibly, but your administration is you know, keeping a thorough eye on things throughout the year to ensure that uh, not only is this year in good shape, but moving forward, budget projections are being done to ensure uh, the financial stability uh, of the county. So, you know, to summarize, I, I think you get the point that things are, are in good shape at the closeout of 2020. I think probably much better than what a lot of other counties are looking for uh, or looking at at their year end 2020. Um, and that's all attributed to the good planning that you've done when it comes to the budget. So I think when you see tonight's 2020 21 budget, you'll see um, you know, that same good planning uh, to be prepared and to have good financial stability moving forward. Uh, so now I'll turn it over to Ray Sr. to discuss that, that portion of it, the 2021 budget. Okay, so as most of you know, Ray and I have been sharing the responsibilities uh, related to Sussex County as your independent auditors. So one of the services that we provide as your auditor is to step back and take an objective look at your budget and see if it's the sound plan, if it continues to follow the policies that you've established, et cetera. Uh, I did take a pretty deep dive look at the budget and it is, in fact, following the fund balance policy that's been established and the debt service policy that's been established. So you, you continue even in the difficult years to move forward with good plans. Um, the budget total that you have is 115128000 with a 0.94% increase in the tax levy, which amounts to a little over $10 to a taxpayer. Um, the, you know, some of the most notable things that I recognized when I reviewed the budget and I discussed them with your administration was uh, there was a decrease in the insurance of over a million dollars, about a million 78,000. I know that's something Greg has been working on and telling you would be coming and it was difficult to be patient for to get here, but it did come uh, in probably the best year when you needed it the most. There was also a pretty significant decrease in the debt service cost of about 989,000. Um, 300,000 of that, the solar bonds were refunded uh, just recently, and you will be saving $300,000 on that through the remaining years that you have a payout. Uh, in staying with your capital planning, uh, your, you increased the in-capital improvement fund funding by $500,000. And then you also were hit with almost a $600,000 increase in pension costs uh, given to you by the state of New Jersey very difficult to put together a budget, uh, you know, with a nominal increase in a pandemic year when the state of New Jersey hands you a, a bill that's $600,000 more uh, than it was the year before. Um, you know, so what Ray had mentioned, and you've heard me talk about it before. So as usual, some good things happened and some bad things happened. Um, you know, some, you had some cost savings, you got handed a bad bill. Uh, in this case, I think, you know, you ended up with more good things happening than bad things. And that is why you were able to have a tax increase of less than 1%, which is the lowest increase in the last six years. Your increases have been uh, very stable for the last four years under 2% but this is the lowest it's been in uh, six years. Um, you know, it may not always be, I don't want to say this easy, but it may, in the future, it may not be easy to continue to go this low, 
but of any year that you would ever want to have the smallest increase that you've had in years, it would be in a pandemic year. As you know, we're just coming off of a 10 year run up. And during those years, um, you know, the good planning that you did put you in a good enough position to come in with a budget that uh, minimizes the tax increase. So, um, you know, looking through all of the other stuff in the budget, other than those items, there were some inflationary increases and a few cuts made uh, throughout the budget to, to get it to the level that it was brought in at. You know, from my view, it's a pretty solid budget plan. Uh, it's pretty lean. It's the lowest increase in a, quite a long time. Uh, but I think it will leave you in a similarly good position at the end of the year that you're in now. And if there's any question relative to my review, I'll stay on, I'll stay on for a while. Thank you very much, Ray. Uh, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and hopefully everybody will be able to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. and um, would, just, would just like to thank uh, uh, Ray Sr. and Ray uh, for, for giving that overview. What I'd like to do now is I would like to, um, I'd like to go through, uh, you know, sort of where we are, because of course, uh, as the commissioners are aware, uh, when we get to this point of publicly sharing the proposed budget, this is the culmination of, of approximately eight months worth of work. So I know uh, sometimes, you know, people ask, well, you know, wow, you know, we've seen the, the county budget, you know, and, and get, uh, you know, a, a, a decent overview, but, you know, it's just, you know, uh, an evening uh, where where the, the highlights are shared, and it, it's just important to know the, the the amount the amount of time and effort that's put in, uh, you know, uh, from every every department, every agency, the uh, various subcommittees that convene to uh, consider the budget. And you know that that's a good segue into uh, the the two subcommittees that are tasked with on an annual basis the development of the document that that will we will be looking at tonight. And so the budget subcommittee uh, comprises of uh, Director Fantasia, Deputy Director Fasano, uh, myself as the county administrator our Chief Financial Officer, Elka Yetter, and our Budget Officer, uh, Mary Lee Van Hooker. And so the, the Budget Subcommittee really looks at the, the, the budget, uh, you know, not only from sort of a 50,000 uh, foot level, but also gets into a lot of the very detailed requests, which are conducted through a series of hearings that are held in the month of October where all of the various agencies and departments and divisions and offices are called in to make their budget presentation. And so there's a lot of not only uh, establishment of overall budget goals by the budget subcommittee, but a lot of very detailed work that goes into uh, helping the, the, the crafting of, of the larger document. And because uh, the nature of the work that we do and the very significant capital investment that is made on an annual basis, there is another subcommittee uh, known as the Capital Budget Subcommittee that is then tasked with looking at what will amount to the county's investment in its infrastructure. And uh, this year's Capital Budget Subcommittee comprised of Commissioner Patillo, Commissioner Yardley, myself, Finance Officer Elka Yetter, and Mary Lee Van Hooker, our Budget Director. And I would like to thank all of you for your, your participation uh, and, and very good suggestions that helped craft the proposed 2021 budget. 
So we're looking at revenues, and, and before I get to the revenues, uh, just to say that the expense side, well, well, we'll come we'll come to the expenses momentarily. But uh, as Ray was saying, the proposed budget calls for appropriations of one hundred and fifteen million one hundred and twenty eight thousand nine hundred and eighty four dollars. This represents a one point nine one percent decrease, or two million two hundred and forty two thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars less than the adopted twenty twenty budget. We have a number of uh, caps that the county is required to uh, abide. The 1977 cap, the 2010 property tax levy cap, and the 2017 county entity cap, which we'll touch upon in, uh, in the presentation. Uh, the state issues its annual guidance. And uh, just last evening, the board considered uh, the cap base adjustment resolution, uh, which will allow the county to be able to bank the difference between what otherwise would have been a three and a half percent increase versus what the amount increased will be. Again, that is a financial planning tool that the county has the ability to use in the event of an emergency or some unexpected significant uh, increase in subsequent budgets. Uh, the board also considered earlier uh, this year the baseline uh, cap adjustments for the 2017 county entity cap for the Board of Elections, the Board of Taxation, the Office of the County Surrogate, and the Office of the County Prosecutor. With the adoptions of these resolutions, the county is within all of the permitted budgetary cap requirements. So as we get into now looking at revenues, uh, which equal what the appropriations are, total revenues equal $115,128,984. And you can see the, the largest portion of revenue, 85% uh, comes from the county purpose tax. And again, I, I do want to stress that that is a function of state budget law. So it is the state of New Jersey, uh, through the legislature, that determines how county government will be funded. It's, it's not a decision that is made at the county commissioner level. And so the, the majority of our operation is funded through property taxes. And then you'll see there are other component pieces of revenue including offset with appropriations, which effectively amounts to the grants that the county receives, state aid, which comprises a large part of the Chapter 12 funding that the county receives for capital improvements at the community college. We have miscellaneous revenues that come from a whole variety of sources and fund balance uh, that is used in support of uh, any given county budget. So in terms of the revenues, what we see specifically this year is that we did have an impact from the pandemic, uh, including some executive orders that were issued by the governor and other CDC guidelines that were issued. Specifically, sheriff's revenue, motor vehicle fines, interest income, transit and uniform fire code were sources that were most affected. For 2021, lower amounts in anticipated revenues are being offset by an increase in fund balance anticipated. As we anticipate that these reductions will not be a long-term issue, we are confident that fund balance anticipated will be lowered once these other revenues recover. And so that gives you a high level overview of what our revenue picture looks like and what the specific revenues were that were impacted as a result of the pandemic. So we'll move on to appropriations and this slide uh, shows the various component pieces that comprise the county budget. 
Again, total appropriations equal total revenues, and that is $115,128,984. And uh, I'll go through and offer the following highlights on the 2021 appropriations. Total salary and wages are up $726,000 from the adopted 2020 budget. The increases are for an uh, eight additional positions, as well as contractual salary increases for employees. Total other expenses are up $743,000 from the adopted 2020 budget. The increase in other expenses is primarily from an increase in grants that the county will recognize in 2021. The reallocation of certain funds for facilities and fleet, which previously were in the capital budget, moving into operating where they're more appropriately placed. Increase in costs due to changes in voting and the ongoing pandemic response, uh, including some expenses for public outreach. We also did see increased technology costs uh, as a result of various hardware and software support agreements that are necessary to maintain and protect the county's information architecture. Uh, this particularly in light of uh, what was just broadcast uh, just last week in terms of cyber attacks from foreign uh, entities, uh, specifically targeting public organizations within the United States. So total general government, salary and wages are up $513,327, while total other expense is up $164,651. We see one of the largest increases in the Board of Elections where salary and wages are up $253,379. With the retirement of the Board of Elections Administrator, this budget for the Board of Elections provides for restructuring of the department, including two new employees and two new board members, uh, which is uh, part of the action that the commissioners took at last evening's meeting. This increase is part of the county entity cap five-year review, and as a result, allows for these additions over the next few years as a result of the commissioners having increased the cap base to accommodate these requests. Also, there were the poll, a number of poll workers, uh, which are temporary workers uh, that are used for either early voting or mail-in voting, are being reclassified from other expense to salary and wage to address a fair labor standards issue in terms of where those positions were to be classified. So whereas last year, those expenses for those temporary workers uh, was billed against uh, other expenses, uh, they are now charged to salary and wage. And that is part of the reason why you see salary and wages going up as much as they are with the other expenses going down more than $83,000. In addition, under general government, we see a, an increase in central and shared services. And that is as a result of salaries being increased with the mail clerk position being restored to the division of, or the Department of Central and Shared Services from Treasury and incorporating the full salary of the department administrator, which had been prorated in the 2020 budget. Other expenses are increased due to postage uh, and also some other costs associated with the county's pandemic response. We see a decrease in the other expense of $100,000 in county council's office. There are various special council contracts for the numerous legal matters involving the county. And based upon 2020 actuals, the recommendation is to reduce county council's other expenses by $100,000.
As Ray had mentioned in his commentary, I'm very pleased to report that total insurance is down $1,078,587. Part of that decrease comes from statewide insurance premiums being reduced approximately $80,000 for liability and workers' compensation insurance premiums. This is primarily due to the reduction in force at the jail. And as a result of the county entering into the three labor contracts with the CWA last year, uh, there are savings realized in health insurance premiums for both employees and their contributions, as well as the county, while maintaining benefits uh, at the same level of the previous benef uh, health insurance benefits offered to employees. So I'm, I'm very pleased to, to say that we were able to accomplish that. That has been uh, something that I've been working on since I started with the county back in 2017. Total public safety, salary and wages are up $12,954 and other expense is down 2,216. The Sheriff's Office sees salary and wages up $271,000, and the increase in salaries and wages is as a result of restructuring civilian staff between the jail and the Sheriff's Office, with the addition of a part-time clerical position and increases due to anticipated contractual salary increases. The prosecutor's salary and wages are up $236,954, with their other expenses up $111,992. This increase in the prosecutor's office is to cover salary and wage increases, uh, which are contractual, as well as promotions for three clerks to legal secretaries. There was an amount that was incorporated as part of the cap base adjustment that we talked about in the county entity cap to cover future contractual increases and still stay within the cap as established by the state of New Jersey. Other expenses are being increased due to the loss of grant funding on software that the prosecutor's office uses and additional software that will be used by the prosecutor's office to improve the efficiency of their investigations. We continue to see benefits from the county uh, and the sheriff having negotiated an agreement with Morris County to house adult inmates at the Morris County Correctional Facility. And as a result, uh, we are seeing for a second year in a row, salary and wages at the jail down $544,000 with other expenses going down $242,782. Salary and wages are down due to the retirement of officers, and other expenses are down due to prior year costs based upon that arrangement that we have with Morris County. Total Public Works salary and wages are up $83,000, with their other expenses up $375,564. Roads and culverts, salary and wages are up $115,000. And that represents, in addition to contractual salary increases, the hiring of two new laborer positions, as well as the provision of seven title promotions. I'm very pleased to say that this builds upon good work that the commissioners have been doing over the last few years to try to restore uh, salary, uh, ex excuse me, staffing levels uh, within our road maintenance garages. And the hiring of these laborers will allow each road maintenance to garage to have at least seven staff members. So it's really the culmination of several years worth of work. The increases in other expense in roads and culverts relates primarily to the repairs of uh, outdated radio equipment and increased costs to comply with the stormwater management permit that is required by both the, the, the federal and state government. Facilities management, 
Their salary and wages are down $84,000 with their other expenses going up $225,403. The retirement of some employees in 2020 and bringing in new employees at lower salaries accounts for the reduction in salary and wages. Also, the county decided not to fund one vacancy in 2021. Other expenses increased due to certain building trades being contracted, as well as site remediation maintenance for the biannual certifications that have to be filed as required by the State Department of Environmental Protection, uh, along with ongoing permits, and uh, there, as we talked about earlier, there are certain expenses that were previously captured in the county's capital budget that are being moved into the facilities management operating budget, uh, which is where they are more appropriately placed. Total health and human services, salary and wages are up $237,717 with other expenses going up $72,413. Uh, as you know, uh, this past year certainly has been a challenge for our Division of Health, and the investment and increases here are as a result of the work that's being done to maintain our public health response, uh, both during the pandemic and beyond. We see salary and wage increases of $189,000 in public health nursing. Increases uh, are, are there due to the restructuring of the health department after the retirement of the nursing supervisor and the need for additional part-time on-call staff to support contact tracing, case investigations, and our ongoing vaccinations. Uh, in addition, we're seeing increases in salary and wages in environmental health, which are up $84,000. These increases are as a result of the restructuring of the division, as well as three retirements and the addition of a, an, a, a technical position within the Division of Environmental Health. I want to touch upon uh, an appropriation that we talk about, uh, you know, on an annual basis. We don't talk about it much beyond the budget process itself, and that is the patient maintenance at state psychiatric institutions, which this year is up $41,461. The county is required to pay for the maintenance of its residents housed at state psychiatric institutions. And this is an appropriation that we, we see from time to time that can swing rather wildly. This is the work that is done in terms of the county adjuster's office who is responsible for making sure that the charges that the county receives in terms of the maintenance of the patients in state psychiatric institutions is appropriate. And as a result, we were advised this year that we would be seeing an increase and we are obligated to pay uh, for those costs. Greg, we then move. Yes. In regards to that, um, do we know whether residents of the nursing homes we have in the county that may come from anywhere and once they're in a nursing home here in the county, if they go to a psychiatric center, are we paying for them? Uh, Herb, I, I would have to defer that question to the the, the county adjuster. Um, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that question uh, now, and I'll be happy to I'll be happy to let you know uh, under that scenario whether or not the county would would have some obligation uh, for for the funding of those individuals. Okay, thank you. Uh, just looking then at total education, uh, other expenses are up $154,730. Most of that increase represents half of the increase for the 2020-2021 uh, school year, uh, fiscal year, and half of the proposed increase for the school fiscal year 21 and 22 for the county technical school. Our total other common operating functions are down $142,339. And much of that, actually all of that, is as a result 
of the county having received additional grant monies to offset the salary and wages within the Office of Transit. We saw reductions of more than $36,000 in utilities, and that's as a result of the, the less, lessened demand for water and sewer and electric at the jail. The Capital Improvement Fund is down $3 million. The 2020 budget included $3.5 million for the match of the County Library Construction Bond Act. And in 2021, the annual appropriation for capital improvement is being increased by $500,000 as part of the debt management plan. As was previously noted, County debt service is down $989,066. This decrease is based upon the amortization schedules of the county's various bonds and notes. And due to the refunding bonds that were issued in January 2021, the county is able to realize $300,000 reduction in the solar guarantee. Statutory expenses are up $448,362. This represents the county's obligation to fund pensions and social security. Pension obligations have increased this year at a blended rate of 12.2%. So that is a, a rather significant uh, increase uh, in terms of what the county has to cover. And that covers both uh, the public employee retirement system as well as the police and fire retirement system expenses. To, to just give a couple of highlights on the budget, uh, this budget allows the county to continue to respond to COVID-related related employee safety, public outreach, and conversion to online platforms to maintain our level of service to the public. It allows for the restructuring of the Division of Health. It addresses compensation issues with skilled staff to deal with recruitment and retention, which is being continued from the work that was started last year. It provides for increased opportunities for staff training across the organization. We will be implementing and, and building upon a time and attendance system, which will allow for increased accountability and internal control. It provides for expanded funding for the Office of Mosquito Control to meet their service demands. It continues to advance an asset management system that ultimately can be deployed countywide, and that effort is being started within the Department of Engineering and Planning. It dedicates resources to improve our road crew staffing levels. It fulfills the additional demands created by the state uh, enacted vote by mail system. It allows for the continued implementation of contract service agreement with Morris County for the housing of our adult inmates and it maintains level funding of debt service and capital to transition us to a more pay-as-you-go for shorter life projects consistent with the county's debt plan. So you can see on your screen, and we just gave uh, sort of what the allocation of a county tax dollar looks like, and you can see that for every tax dollar, 22 cents goes to capital, debt, and pension expenses, as well as Social Security. 20 cents goes to public safety. 18 cents goes to insurance, which is our health insurance, our liability insurance, and our workers' compensation insurance. 12 cents goes to public works, which includes roads and culverts and bridge and traffic safety. 11 cents goes to education which is support to the, the, the community college as well as the technical school. 10 cents goes to general government, uh, which effectively represents just about the balance of all the other county operations. Five cents goes to health and welfare, and just two cents goes to utilities and other common expenses. So as stated before, the 2021 proposed county budget represents a 1.91% decrease from the adopted 2020 budget. And the chart just gives you a summary of where the budget, total salary and wages, total pension, 
and what the tax levy was for fiscal years 2019, 2020, and 2021. So you can see the budget going down to a total of $115.1 million. You see salary and wages going up uh, from 32.1 million to 32.8 million. Total pension goes from 4.92 to 5.52 million. And there is a small increase in the tax levy from 96 million to 96.9 million. We talked about the various highlights, so I, I won't go through that because that's just a, a summary of what, uh, what we just talked about. And now just move into uh, the capital program uh, to touch upon the large capital investment that the, is proposed uh, for the county to make in 2021. The total capital program for 2021 is $33.1 million. You can see that the majority of that is in roads and bridges of $13.6 million or 41%. You can see equal amounts uh, in education and the library at around 21, 22%. Uh, the library includes the grant for the library construction bond uh, grant that the county received. And the education represents uh, the bond for the uh, Secure Our Schools grant that the technical school will be applying, both the technical school and the college will be applying for. The balance of the capital improvements then uh, are on public safety, fleet management, elections, a uh, small amount for clerk of the board, facilities, and debt issuance costs. We just gave a very quick highlight of some of the largest capital projects. Uh, many of these are things that you'll see on an annual basis, uh, which includes seven and a half million dollars of road resurfacing. We talked about the grant that the county has received for the renovations at the Dennis Library. Uh, we touched upon uh, the amount that the technical school is seeking from the state and the county's match for uh, improvements at the vocational school. We're looking at uh, just over $4 million of bridge replacements and improvements. This budget continues to advance a very significant uh, investment in the county's guide rail system including uh, additional heavy machinery. There are other technical school improvements specifically dealing with their uh, uh, ventilation systems at the technical school. We've continued to set monies aside for the replacement of the voting machines and wait to hear from the state as to what the expectation is as far as how those machines will need to be replaced and so we continue to make uh, an investment so that at the time those uh, machines need to be replaced, we will have sufficient funds to do so. There are a variety of uh, security and elevator improvements at the Judicial Center, as well as the funding of uh, a, a storage facility at the Frankfurt Emergency Management Office. And so with that, uh, I would like to uh, turn this over to our Chief Financial Officer, Elka Yetter, uh, to share uh, with you uh, some updates uh, from what we talked, uh, talked about last. Elka? Thank you, Greg. And thank you to the commissioners for allowing us to have this work session for the 2021 budget. I just wanted to go over the, some updates Grants, we'll start with grants. The amount budgeted for grants is a changing number as the county receives notifications of new grant awards. The grants are tax neutral in the fact that revenues offset the appropriations. The changes since February 26th result in a reduction of the 2021 area plan contract award of $107,000 and the addition of NJA CCHO, which is a health department grant in the award an award in the amount of 
$360. So the total 2021 operating grant revenue and appropriations is $4,870,000 with a county match of $615,000. The county, and now we'll switch over to new construction. The county tax administrator has certified that the new rateable adjustment to the tax levy equals $533,392. As a result, it was proposed to use this revenue to decrease the amount to be raised through taxes. The commissioners are mindful of New Jersey's high property taxes in particular during the pandemic and have kept the amount to be raised by taxation on existing taxpayers below 1%. Now we can move on to the tax rate. We have just received the preliminary equalization table from the county tax administrator and the county's net valuation taxable or MVT has increased by approximately $222 million or 1.26% increase from 2020. Based on the MVT, the estimated county tax rate is 54.433 cents per hundred. The increase to last year's taxpayer is approximately 0.94% or approximately $10 for the average home of $242,000. In addition to our operating budget, the county commissioners will be asked to pass resolutions regarding the library and open space tax. The proposed 2021 draft library budget calls for a total budget of $6,264,303, which represents a 1.7% increase or 104,838 dollars above the 2020 budget. However, the amount to be raised in taxes for library operations will increase only 0.99%. The County Open Space Trust Fund is proposed to remain the same at $395,000 in the amount to be raised by taxes. These costs cover the salaries associated with the employees that handle all issues for open space and farmland preservation within the planning division. The open space budget also includes funds earmarked towards the Municipal Trails Grant Program developed by the Open Space Committee looking to be implemented in the upcoming year. At this time, I will turn it back over to Administrator Greg Poff. Thank you very much, Elka. And I, I just really want to conclude uh, as I started uh, thanking Elka uh, for all of her excellent work on this budget. Uh, you can imagine the uh, strain on her office uh, as she and her staff have been responsible uh, for gathering uh, documentation and submitting for reimbursements to a number of grants that the county has received uh, in response to the pandemic, including uh, getting information together and being able to submit for reimbursement to FEMA, having to close out the year, uh, and all the while juggle putting together the 2021 uh, operating and capital budgets. She really has done an exemplary job, and I would be remiss not to recognize our budget director, Mary Lee Van Hooker, uh, who has just done extraordinary work for us in being able to uh, provide the necessary support and interface with the various agencies, offices, departments, and divisions in the preparation of the budget document. So it's our pleasure to have had the opportunity to give this overview of the county budget to the commissioners. Um, we uh, welcome uh, any, any comments or questions that you have, and we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, in addition to uh, that, um, based upon the, the conversation this evening, uh, we will be looking for direction uh, to have uh, the chief financial officer prepare the budget document on the required state forms for the commissioners to give consideration to introduction and approval at the end of the month on March 24th, anticipating a public hearing and adoption of the 2021 county budget at the April 28th commissioners meeting. And thank you very much.
Sorry, I tried to unmute myself about three times there. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. Okay, um, that was the uh, budget review. Now what I am going to do is uh, go to each commissioner and see if there are any questions for Greg or Elka um, or for Ray or Ray. Um, so we will start with Commissioner Carney. Yes, thank you, Dawn. Um, I just have one question, and maybe I missed it, Greg. Uh, I, we have eight new employees. I heard two two were laborers from the for the DPW, um, and two for the from the Board of Election. That's four. Could you just expand on the other four for me? Uh, I'd be happy to. Uh, just give me just a moment. Uh, sure. It's uh, two laborers in roads and culverts. Uh, one in the Office of Mosquito Control. Two in the Board of Elections, one in the Division of Planning and Economic Development, one in the Assistant Fire, uh, one in the Fire Marshal's office, and one in my office, which is a conversion from a part-time to a full-time employee. Okay, and I don't know if you went over that. And what, what is the, the cost of those eight new employees? Oh, Chris, I don't have the, the breakdown of those uh, individually. I'll, uh, I'll work on putting that together. No, just, just a gross amount with the A. I'm not looking for an individual, just a sum. Yeah, of, I, of, I've, of got, a, I've got to run either. through it real quick. I'll, I'll have the answer okay. for you momentarily. Okay, no, no problem. Thank you. That's all I have. I appreciate what you guys did for putting this together. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Commissioner Patillo. Uh, actually, I, I don't have any uh, questions to ask. All my questions have been answered, uh, but I do want to thank everyone on the team that you have done such a terrific job. Uh, this was quite a challenging year with the pandemic, especially on our finances. So thank all of you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Yardley. Yes. Um, the one fire marshal, is that the one that's coming from Frankfort Township? Uh, the request from the fire marshal's office is, is to have uh, one full-time uh, employee in that office. That office currently is staffed with all part-time employees. Um, and it, it, it is becoming more challenging to get licensed uh, individuals to serve uh, in the, the office of the fire marshal. And uh, Commissioner, you, you raise a good point. We've seen uh, over the years a number of municipalities who no longer are able to maintain uh, their own part-time people and uh, struggle to find coverage uh, with licensed inspectors. The request from the Office of the Fire Marshal is to have one full-time uh, inspector there and that is due to the increased reporting requirements by the state of New Jersey, as well as they've really made a, a very good effort uh, tr to try to collect on uh, overdue penalties and fines and, and need the additional support to be able to continue that effort. But is, is my question though is, is this the one that there was a conversation that I believe Frankfurt um, wanted to get rid of their person and, and we were able to take that person? No, 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 this is, we, we did not, we ultimately did not engage uh, in any agreement with Frankfurt at that time. Okay, uh, that's, all right. And, and this, is a, this is a new position that will be advertised in accordance with civil service regulations. Okay, thank you. I'm good. Uh, thank you, Dawn. Great presentation, uh, Greg and um, Ray and Ray Jr. Very good job. And Elka. Okay, thank you. Um, Deputy Director Fasano. Thanks, Dawn. And, and I want to thank uh, the team as well. I, I, I know this was uh, a tremendous amount of work, especially given the year. Uh, uh, Sylvia made the comment that this year has been hard 
uh, on on finances, but you, you wouldn't necessarily know that uh, uh, when looking at this budget on its surface. Uh, and, and that's a good thing and a testament uh, to all your work. I, I just had two questions regarding uh, uh, the capital budget. Uh, the Dennis Library renovations, we have a recommended funding of $7 million. Is that inclusive of the anticipated uh, uh, state grant funding, or is that in addition to it? That includes the, that includes the state grant. Okay. Uh, and uh, for the technical school grant application, um, I understand that uh, the technical school still, still needs to apply for that grant. Uh, and we would still need to wait to hear. Uh, but that 6.3, is is that also inclusive of a potential state uh, uh, contribution, or would that be our portion? Uh, it, it includes it includes the grant uh, as well. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you. Um, I, I don't have questions because obviously we've been uh, knee deep in this for months at a time going going over everything from the minutia all the way up to the, you know, aerial view that we're at tonight. What I can say is I'm still awestruck and I've always been humbled ever since um, I'm sure a lot of you who sit here with me feel this way that we have residents who actually entrust these kinds of decisions uh, and put these decisions in our hands that we are able to serve them and, and allocate these funds uh, to so many programs and so many services. Um, the, the endless miles of roadways and we, we had all those conversations about um, guide rail and I mean, it, it's, it's such a holistic, um, holistic responsibility that we have and I am so proud of the professionals that we have and the employees that we have. Um, I don't know, it's just, it, this is just a humbling experience, I think from start to finish, to see that we were able this year to put forth a budget that's nearly 2% decrease from the budget in 2020. Um, and, and when everything had happened first with COVID, the scrambling and the reallocation when we were not sure if we were gonna get any funds of any kind and waiting months and months to see. Um, this has been, uh, I, I don't know, it's been a surreal experience. If you ever asked any of us a year ago today, um, you know, just as, as the orders were coming out for everybody to quarantine, I don't think I could have ever told the story of 2020 into 2021 and ever ended up with the result that we're at tonight. Um, I, I'm just so proud of everybody that uh, worked so hard to make this what it could possibly be. Um, the fact that we were hit with, you know, such a massive increase in pensions from the state uh, to increase in, in the pandemic year to have to pay an additional $600,000 towards, uh, towards the pension and then the uh, state mental health facilities, that that amount you know, had, had gone up only further exemplifies the perfect timing that Ray had discussed where we were able to um, you know, reassign re <clears throat> our insurance provider through months upon months of work uh, with Greg and, and negotiating with employees to make sure that they still maintained um, the same level of service before but for cost saving measures down to the sheriff with the consolidation with Morris County. Like we always have people on the lookout for us. Uh, Elka with the refinancing for solar to help pay for, you know, some of those decisions that uh, did not go the way that uh, prior board thought they would go to benefit the county and still manage with the help and you know, spearheaded by uh, former freeholder Hertzberg for a debt reduction plan and sitting with uh, Ray and going through it and just being steadfast and saying, no, we do have to have a reasonable debt reduction plan. And this year, even in the midst of everything, being able to allocate an additional $500,000 towards past debt so we can realize a debt reduction plan so we are not borrowing to spend. Um, 
like I said, I'm just overwhelmed by it and seeing it in, in this presentation form tonight. I just want to say thank you. That's, that's it. And as far as Elka being able to move forward, and I'll put the information on the sheets, if we could just get the information that Commissioner Carney had asked for about the employees, just so you know, we have an idea. We've had many discussions about different departments needing additional help and being short staffed. And I just would, would like to get a look at those figures again, um, you know, from a concrete standpoint. And I think, you know, within the next uh, day or so, as long as the board is agreeable, you know, to, to what comes to us, I would say that my, my vote would be to, to move forward to prepare on, on the documents. We, we estimate the uh, cost of the additional employees uh, between uh, 270 and $290,000. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Greg, for that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, um, so that um, covers, I'm um, going back here to the agenda. We were at number 16, which was the budget review. Um, on number 17, personnel, there is none. Uh, 18 is an administrative report, so Administrator Poff. Uh, unless you'd like me to talk for another 45 minutes, uh, I'll, I'll allow my presentation to stand as my report. <laughs> I think we'd all agree I'd rather you didn't, so that's okay. Um, okay, thank you. And moving on to 18, um, no, that was administrative report, 19 county council report. Uh, council was unable to join us this evening. Okay. Uh, number 20, unfinished business. Does any commissioner have any unfinished business they wish to discuss? Hearing none, any new business under number 21? Does any commissioner have anything to introduce under new business? Hearing none, number 22, public session from the floor. This public session is for general comments. Comments are limited to three minutes or less. Callers wanting to make a comment are first asked to state their name and municipality, and the clerk will create a roster and call each in the order received. So this is comments on um, any subject or the presentation we just heard, the agenda item, um, and it's open to the public. So I, uh, I'm going to need a motion to open the meeting to the public. I'll make the motion, John. And a second, please. I'll second, Commissioner Carney. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, at this point, the meeting is open to the public. If anyone wishes to speak, please state your name in the municipality and the clerk will create the roll. Hearing no one coming forward, uh, I would need a motion to close the meeting to the public. I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. I'll second it. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're going to go with <laughs> no All right. So we will have Herb made the motion and Sylvia seconded. <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The session, uh, public session is closed. Uh, we don't have uh, any reminders on this agenda tonight. So at this point, I just want to say again, thank you. Thank you so much, um, especially for us to be able to meet, you know, in, in the Zoom format again. I know everybody's kind of getting their sea legs with it. Appreciate IT for your help with this. Um, but again, we really appreciate the professionals, but, uh, you know, the professionals represent the, you know, the, again, the aerial view. Uh, I want to thank each and every single employee um, in every single department. Uh, it is, it, it's a well-oiled machine. Let's put it that way. And uh, we appreciate all the work that you do, especially during, during this past year. So at this uh, time, I would need a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
I'll make the motion. And a second, please. I'll second, second. Anthony. <laughs> okay, Anthony, second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you to everyone. Please get home safe if you're out and about.